Welcome to Electron Line. In this example, we're going to show you how to find the potential difference between two points near an infinite line charge. Now, what we're saying here is how will the potential or the voltage change when we move from point A, let's say, to point B, and realizing that if you have an infinite line charge, there will be an electric field around there, and the electric field will diminish with the distance as you move farther and farther away from the line charge. So that means that as you move from A to B, the potential, the voltage, should increase. So we're trying to find the difference going from A to B. Notice that the distance from uh, the line charge to A is small a, the distance from the line charge to B is small b. So how do we go about doing that? Well, again, think about the principle here. We know that the, the uh, electric field magnitude is equal to the voltage divided by the distance traveled. Or what we can say, so we move R across here, we can say that the change in the potential or the dV is equal to E times dr. That's the best way to write it. So what that means, and I, I know I wrote a small r here, let's, let's just make it a big r right there. That makes it easier to see it. So what we can then surmise from that is that the potential will change as a function of the strength of the field and of how far we move along that field. Now remember, if we move perpendicular to the electric field, the potential will not change. If we move in the same direction as the electric field, the potential will change. So since the electric field will emanate in this direction, and so therefore we travel either in the same direction or the opposite direction of the electric field, the potential will change. The second thing we need to do is find the equation for the electric field along an infinite line charge. And for that, I'm going to use the Gaussian surface. I'll work it out real quick here because that's an easy problem. So what we can think about here is create a Gaussian surface around the infinite line charge. And we're going to find the electric field over here at the edge of the Gaussian surface, which is either at point B or point A, it doesn't matter. And so we can then say that the surface integral of E dot dA is equal to the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. And notice that we can say that the Q inside lambda is simply equal to some constant. So it's going to be a certain amount of charge per unit length. So in that case, we, if we know that the length of this Gaussian surface is L and the radius of this Gaussian surface, let's call it R, we can then say that E, the strength of the field, times the surface area of the cylinder, ignoring the end, the ends, because they're relatively small compared to the rest of the surface, that would be the circumference, which is 2 pi r times the length L, equals the charge inside, which is the linear charge density, times the length, divided by epsilon sub naught. Notice that the L's cancel out, and so we can then write that the electric field strength is equal to the linear charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times r. And that would then be the electric field strength as a function of distance away from the line, from the line charge. And so therefore we can say that, for example, the potential at B would be equal to lambda sub naught 2 pi epsilon sub naught times small b, and then the potential A would be, of course, the whole thing with R replaced by A. But what we're trying to do here is find the difference in the potential going from A to B. So the way we can do that is start with this equation right here. And we can say that dV, the small amount of change in the potential going from one spot to the very next spot very close together, is equal to the strength of the electric field at that point times dr. Small motion in that direction. The electric field is what we have right over here. So we can say that the small amount of potential difference is equal to the linear charge density divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught r times dr. And then, of course, to find the whole potential difference traveling from A to B, we can say that V is equal to the integral. Now we have to put a negative sign in front of it, because since the electric field is in this direction, away from the charge, and we know that the potential increases when we move towards the charge, we have to have a negative sign in there to make it work. So negative, that's by definition, going from the outer A to the inner B of the uh, electric field strength, which is lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught R times dr. Now, of course, we can take all the constants out. So this becomes equal to minus lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the integral from A to B of dr over R. And that's an easy integral to do. That's simply the natural log of R. 
So this becomes equal to minus lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of r evaluated from a to b. Of course, then we plug in the upper limit, subtract when plug in the lower limit. So this becomes minus lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of the upper limit, b, minus the natural log of the lower limit, a. Of course, at this point, we can probably apply the negative sign. So when we take the negative sign and put it over here, this then becomes equal to lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of A minus the natural log of B. And finally, yeah, and you know what? I used big A and big B, but probably should have used small a and small b because these are actually the distances. So if I just go ahead and replace the large a's with small a's, that probably makes it a little bit more. Um, so this would be small b, small a, and this would be small a, small little b, b, little b. Because large a and large b, capital A, capital B, were simply the locations of those points. A and b are simply distances, and we want to integrate over distances, so I should use the small letters. And so finally, when I then simplify that, we can say that the potential difference so delta V, the potential difference going from A to B is equal to, remember when we subtract the natural log of uh, B from the natural log of A, we can write it as follows. We can write it as lambda sub naught divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times the natural log of A divided by B. Like that. And remember that a is a bigger number than b, so we know that a divided by b is greater than 1, and the natural log of a number greater than 1 is positive, so we'll get a positive difference. So moving from a to b will give us a positive increase in the potential, which is what we expect, and this would then be the proper answer. So again, as a summary, real quick, we're trying to move from a to b near infinite line charge. We know that the electric field emanates outward in all directions. So we're going to be moving in the opposite direction of the electric field, meaning the potential will increase. We use the Gaussian surface to find out the electric field strength at any distance away from that line charge. We also realize that there's a relationship between the electric field and the potential difference, and that the change in the potential difference is equal to the strength of the field times the distance you move in the same direction or opposite direction of the field. We then set it up as an integral. Remember, we need a negative sign because the field is in this direction and the increase in potential difference is in this direction, so we need the negative sign to compensate for that. This is the electric field strength times a small change in the distance in that direction. So we're moving from A to B, we're moving in this direction. And then the limits are from A to B, so from A to B, and we integrate, and that's then the answer. So that would be the potential difference between those two points.